Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bharat Sharma, the chair of this session. Friends, uh, I will be sharing some of the lessons regarding SRI in Chhattisgarh. As Bharat uh, said, I have been working in this area since almost 40 years in the academics and then you know shifted to various things. Since KP has uh, Professor Palna Swami asked me to do this small study, so I will be sharing with you not so much data because those, you know, the data related analysis will be presented by KP. But I will just confine to Chhattisgarh and you know relevant uh, uh, parameters uh, related to performance. Uh, I will be sharing very few but basically you know my my uh, my emphasis will be that what we really can learn from the experience of Chhattisgarh and whether uh, you know the, the various kind of the debates are centered around this SI and what lessons we have learned from the farmers as well as from the implementing agencies. So this is basically what I will be sharing. But <coughs> let me very. Uh, so this basically I will. Uh, this is very important when we talk about the SRI uh, kind of the innovations. That uh, what kind of people they are in a particular location and what is what are the resource base and how rice you know as a sector as a production system plays important role in that particular area. So this is very important. Then very briefly, I will, mean, uh, as I said, that Panna Swami will be, you know, covering uh, most of the economic parameters of SRI, but I will just touch upon the yield levels, the return and the difference between the SRI and non-SRI plots in terms of the gains. Then what are the major feedbacks, you know, in the, in the, uh, of the farmers implementing agency? We have the five implementing agencies in Chhattisgarh, Government of Chhattisgarh Agriculture Department, then we have the, you know, under this uh, National Food Security Mission, the <coughs> Academy, Chhattisgarh Academy is also involved in the trial. And uh, there are two, three NGOs, you know, where they are, in, uh, they are working in Chhattisgarh. Uh, getting fund from Dorothy Rappel Data Trust also, the Kram Daksh is an NGO and then so many other agency Nabar also funding these NGOs under this, their you know, uh, rural innovation programs and SRI is being adopted. And then I will just spell out very briefly that you know in order to promote this scaling up at the larger, uh, to cover the larger area, what are the essential steps and what lessons we have learned which have been very important driving force of the success or failure. So the, uh, the, this is the state of Chhattisgarh and uh, <coughs> surrounded by the, you know, uh, some eastern and western states and there are distinct agroclimatic uh, zones and these agroclimatic zones largely, you know, if you, uh, 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 those of you are aware about the agroclimatic region planning which we have started in 75 year plan. So this is, this falls under the 7th, uh, uh, you know, agroclimatic zones and there are distinct you know, agroclimatic conditions in, in, the, in the state of Chhattisgarh uh, where you, we have the hills and the Buster Plateau and then uh, Chhattisgarh Plains. So this is basically the coverage of the crop area and uh, you can see that Chhattisgarh place where technology has played very important role as far as the rice is concerned they, they, they cover a sizable um, area, uh, crop area in comparison to the you know northern and the uh, Bhastar plateau. Uh, <coughs> I must also tell you that in terms of the soil condition, in terms of the people you know, the, the even within tribal groups, it varies and also in terms of the process of transformation of the agriculture, it, it has a, a significant variability across the three, uh, three agroclimatic conditions and the reason I am sharing this slide is that I will relate this with the SRI adaptation process. Then uh, very briefly I want to uh, 
showed with you that this is a, you know, has almost 45% of the, you know, marginalized people. Are the people who are, you know, still after 60 years they are at the margin. There is a sizable population below poverty line, no matter what poverty line definition you want to adopt. The number will vary between, you know, kind of the, the 44 to even it goes to 60 percent. There is a huge chunk of the marginal and the small farmers, and their, their share is, you know, in comparison to uh, the other size of holding, is, is quite uh, significant. It's still, I mean, people have been arguing whether it is a Swaminathan report on the Farmers Commission or other reports, people have been arguing that there is a slight shift from the agriculture, but still, this state has a large concentration of the people in the agriculture, and uh, <coughs> almost 50%, I mean, close to 50% area is under the top. Then, you know, I mean, there is a uh, paradox that despite the very uh, very good rainfall uh, in the region, uh, the, the area is by and large, you know, the whole state is, um, uh, as Bharat uh, yesterday in his presentation mentioned, that it, it falls under the rain fed uh, conditions. The soil, you know, across the agroclimatic conditions, this is the basically the um, red and yellow soils. The irrigation, total irrigated area is only 28% and let me tell you here that the, the canal irrigation contributed almost 66% but it is the life saving irrigation. So the supplementary irrigation is being given at the critical crop growth stage. So this is very important, this is not assured irrigation, only you know it is released on the demand base and there have been uh, you know, rights over the water between farmers and the uh, irrigation department. So what I am saying here that the the uh, the, uh, the potential for the SRI uh, is you know with the tail plus UVL plus other you know sources. The other sources includes the multi-use water bodies where the fisheries and other activities are also being taken. <coughs> So if you see the rice kind of the situation in uh, Chhattisgarh, so rice is the main crop and uh, it, it uh, and <coughs> you know, but it's still there is a there is a transformation right from broadcasting bias into transplanting and transplanting to line sowing and line sowing to your uh, uh, SRI. But uh, it's still today the, the major practice is you know broadcast biasing. And uh, um, uh, <coughs> then the 70% the area, I mean, despite this rainfall, it is under the rain fed conditions. We have very three distinct situations as far as the land topography is concerned the upland and the midland and the uh, 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 rain fed low um, area. The most promising varieties uh, you can see. These are the varieties and uh, <coughs> generally the, the mid to you know, early duration variety. This is a recent shift, otherwise it was a long term uh, duration variety and recent shift that take it contributes almost 60% area. There is also area catching up under the hybrid rice. So if you see the, you know, the, this data are from the National uh, Food Security Mission. They have, they have introduced under the National Food Security System, you know, the three different kind of the intervention to promote the rice production. And these are, uh, no, this is, uh, you know, area production and uh, uh, yield. And if you compare the yield of Chhattisgarh, despite, because this is known as the rice power of Central India at one point, and just for your information, let me also tell you that this is the state which has 23,000, you know, uh, traditional varieties germ plus. And we are maintaining this, uh, <coughs> there was a, uh, and despite that, I mean, uh, uh, it is only last 10 years when there, were, there was a shift, you know, now uh, we are trying those varieties at the larger scale. And then the, the reason I am mentioning this is, I will come back to this, uh, traditional variety uh, advantage in relation to the SRI. Now, if you see the changes, you know, recent changes in the in the uh, management practice, 
So from both cast biopsy, the people have gradually shifted to transplanting. From transplanting, if you see the line swelling, and then there is hybrid and SRI. So almost, you know, the, the area is not sizable. It's only 25,000 kind of the odd uh, hectares under the SRI because it, it was a delayed start or the late start in the state of Chhattisgarh. And uh, it was possible because there is a, you know, kind of, uh, as I said, the NABARD uh, and uh, this National Food Security Mission and some of the uh, Dorabji uh, Tata Trust, they have uh, given significant money to, to some of the NGOs and they are involved in this. They, if you compare, you know, the improved package practices with the farmers, it's with all the interventions, you know, hybrid rice, uh, SRI and this, there is a significant, I mean, quite sizable change in the productivity levels. Now, uh, this uh, uh, this is the analysis that uh, Dr. Parma Swami will, you know, uh, will also uh, make the presentation when the, of the 13 states which he has covered. But uh, in my portion, if you see, the yield difference is almost, you know, in the tune of 25 percent. Although the gas margin is, it looks very small, 2 percent, but you know, for a small farmer, it is quite sizable. And the, there is a debate going on, you know. I um, also served for five years as a chairman of the Agriculture Cost and Price Commission, and we have been debating that how to reduce the cost of cultivation uh, in order to be com uh, com uh, competitive at the international level. So this is very important when we, when we see the sizable difference, uh, Parma Swami has further analyzed this. Now, uh, you know, uh, there, uh, there are so, uh, Imi Tata has also produced three, four years, three, four very important piece of the work. And uh, there was a debate that, you know, the scientists in agriculture industry or in a research organization, they have still, you know, to, to understand the whole socio-economic and the uh, agronomical dynamics of this crop. Uh, of this uh, method, but but based on the farmer feedback, and let me tell you, this is not one or two farmers. This the, the analysis which Dr. Parna Swami will present are my cost and yield component is restricted only on the 112 farmers. But this is the this is the, these are the feedback I am sharing with you for more than two two to three thousand farmers pulling all the you know, kind of the implementing agencies, those they have adopted the demonstrations. So, they, in their opinion, you know, if they, there is a always, you know, the most critical month for in Chhattisgarh for the rainfall is from June to October. And if there is a erratic rainfall, other than other methods, you know, with the less amount of the water, I guess, in the farmer's perception, this is the best option. And if you see the yield and low input cost, the incidence of pest, I mean, in, in large number of the demonstration, this has been um, uh, observed by the farmer. These are the observations. I am not claiming that these are the empirical evidences. I am saying that these are the observations of the, of, of the farmer. I will not say perception, but these are the observations. Then the marker, you know, it's a, a, the, the, the marker is under continuous, uh, you know, mechanical uh, improvement. So the marker and the weed equipment, they, they are the major, they play the major role. Uh, I mean, when in terms of the reducing the cost for the weed side. In view of the farmer, you know, the production which they got with their traditional kind of the conventional method, it has enhanced almost three to four months food security, that is the amount of the additional yield they got. The most important thing which is related to agronomical kind of the thing, that you know, the dry spells are very, very common. The, the, for the another study which, uh, with, which uh, I have provided the information to KP under this climate change. So if you see the data of uh, 50 years, you will find that this is very frequent phenomena. Uh, in the in the state of Chhattisgarh, so this this helps uh, SRI helps that. Now implementing agencies, as I said, that this is these these are the cool observations of by the implementing agencies. And if you see that green uh, manually is coming back, I mean in the production system, 
because earlier uh, you know uh, the dhecha or the traditional kind of the thing we 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 thought that you know they should get the back seat but it is coming late with the with the uh, control irrigation facility and you know kind of the uh, this the heater is you know uh, kind of there is a problem i mean when you talk about sri um uh, i i recall my days of 70s when we we used to you know recommend the common uh, recommendation for the farmers so in case of uh, sri one one has to be very very careful when you have to take into account the soil condition you have to take into account and relate that with the with the kind of machines which you want to come out then this is also i mean the alternate way, uh, you know kind of the waiting and drying so this this is in practical you know it it really doesn't work and uh, 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 with the show the irrigation or those kind of thing unfortunately i should also mention here that in chatisgarh the flood irrigation method field to field is still prevalent under the canal irrigation so the moment you talk about the sri generally it will take 10 15 years you have to dismantle those big bunks you know because the rice bunks and i am not in favor of those as a social scientist because this rice bunks provide the supplementary uh, you know kind of the uh, material for the food security of the people they they grow drum sticks and those kind of things on the rice bunk and the size of the rice bunk in chatisgarh if you see it is just as big as the, the, the distance between these two tables you know two sides so it is very important that we have to understand that dynamic sars and uh, um, you know under this uh, national food security mission they have the uh, you know uh, they have adopted the cluster approach this i will again um, uh, kind of uh, elaborate in the next slide that under the cluster approach at least 10 hectares should be there now the traditional externality kind of the problem you know if if i am a farmer and i am located at the head or middle plane of the canal and my mindset is that that the dry spell will be there so i will out of you know uh, insecurity i will i will ensure that enough water is you know in pound in the in the in the field and the next fellow if we ought to adopt the sri it will have the kind of the uh, up stair down stair it will have the production externalities so that is very important when we talk about this and then uh, <coughs> is still you know uh, when when people talk about sri they really it is very important that since they are in the learning process you you cannot assume as a scientist that you know they they, they will understand if if uh, one farmer has adopted the whole village will adopt this will not work in case of the sri because still the uh, farmer traditionally using this uh, conventional method transplanting and line sowing they don't see in one season or two season uh, with one demonstration or two demonstration in the comparative advantage then uh, based on uh, the implementing agencies you know only highly profuse kind of the seeding seeding varieties they they fit very well when we talk about the sri and uh, uh, then timely availability we have introduced the sri but the supplementary component which are necessary for implementing the sri kind of the technology we we generally have the poor you know account on that then continuous i mean there must be a continuous we have the tnv system all kind of those system uh, when we introduce the first phase of the green revolution but here also i think and there's no the implementing agency there is a need you know the, the interaction between non adapter adapter then sri also needs a slight modification according to the soil and other topographical conditions you cannot have the similar kind of the package uh, of practices for the uh, then most important thing is try to institutionalize this in the research and extension system i mean then only uh, you can have the office getting or uh, uh, covering the larger area so the uh, this i have mentioned that the present approach is this and then since uh, you know i would say that let us let us do it at least for 2 3 years in a in a in a in a area where the presence of the extension workers is there 
other thing which is most important, we have done a study for the EV, you know, to, uh, I have done this and you will surprise that most of the traditional scented varieties are disappearing. And they were, if you, now we call it a survey, but if you go to the very remote tribal areas, these people have been adopting this may, may not be the exact format of the SRI or the crop geometry, but they have been adopting this for the scented varieties. And there are there are cases in the in the at the interface of the buster where you know and the in the blade areas. By default, we have in those areas where uh, you know we have the uh, scented varieties, the organic farming. There are farmers in Chhattisgarh who have not seen this urea and other thing, and I am very happy that they have not seen it when, when it comes to the, uh, you know, kind of the value added uh, production of the scented varieties. So, <coughs> they, they, down the line, uh, I, since time is not there, but I have some additional, you know, photographs uh, related to mechanize how the mechanized process, you know, it can become a regular kind of the entrepreneurship in those areas where SRI is there, where multiple tasks can be handled by, by the single machine. Now, uh, what kind of the steps, you know, according to this, uh, uh, the, these people who are involved there? So, the, the very important thing is, you know, kind of continuous interaction, whether it is through the community resource person, whether it is through the small self group, the orientation program, you have to, you know, kind of, uh, as, as we have done in case of the non-timber forest project, when we, we do the value addition, those kind of video shows are, the, you know, kind of the extension methods, we can, we can adopt, this is a hand holding, and then, Try to, you know, do the PI uh, uh, participatory ruler appraisal kind of thing to tell the farmers that look here, this is your field and before harvesting you can see that what is, what is the difference with the non-SRI uh, kind of thing. So, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> I would say that don't stick to the fixed components of the SRI try to deviate from the core recommendations which uh, agronomists are those people who are advocating uh, the SRI according to the agroclimatic conditions. Then uh, the, the second thing is, you know, kind of uh, core components, the adoption of the core components according to the uh, agroclimatic situation. The, the uh, variation uh, in the, you know, uh, kind of the yield levels it has to support us continuously through the technical information and this the next point that is mobilizing quality inputs this KP will um, you know talk about the transaction task but I think based on the implementing agency based on the farmers perception this is very huge in as far as Chhattisgarh is concerned because you know it is uh, um, uh, still in the process of traditional agriculture. So, the land topography, uh, mode of irrigation, as I said, that uh, canal irrigation will be very difficult. And then, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, skin labor. I mean, you, you, you can't have those kind of labors which are working traditionally in the, in the, in the uh, uh, ready field. You have to train also the skin labor in order to have the value addition uh, thing. Thank you so much. This is uh, what I thought that I would share.